want to welcome everyone to the power of our story. Uh, we are a place of safety for our protectors to process the journey together with others that get it. We do this by storytelling as our stories connect us. Please don't spend years suffering in silence. You can reach out to us at the power of our story and meet our amazing community that cares about you and understands. So uh, today I wanna welcome Max Bloom. Um, excited to have you, Max. Um, Max grew up in New York and joined the Navy after finishing high school. His career spanned over 13 years and included deployments aboard the USS Ronald Reagan, the USNS Bridge, two tours in Afghanistan, and one to Iraq. He was trained as a helicopter avionics technician and a multi-platform unmanned air for aircraft pilot. After leaving the Navy, Max worked as a government contractor and began a career in filmmaking. His first feature documentary, American M Mizuhiki, is currently in consideration for the 2023 GI Film Festival. And he is working on a brand new project about a Marine wounded in Afghanistan who is now training in jiu-jitsu, which we'll hear more about today. So welcome, Max. Welcome to the power of our story. Thank you for that great introduction. So I should have prepped you for that curveball, American Mizuhiki, but you got it perfect. So good. I was I, I, I was hoping I would. <laughs> right when you were about to say it, I was like, oh, we should have talked about that before. Yeah, that was a great project that I got to do in, in Okinawa about a nonprofit who since 1952, immediately following World War II, has been working to rebuild the relationship between the Americans and the Okinawans who lost almost half their population to the war, their civilian population. So it was truly inspirational, and that is now, yeah, in consideration at the GI Film Festival. We should be hearing about that in a couple months. That's wonderful, because I think the last time you were on, you were just moving that out. Yeah. Yeah, so that's, oh, that's great to hear. That's so great to hear. I can't wait to see that since we're here in San Diego. So yes. yes, I'm back. I'm back stateside on American soil. Yeah, that's great. Well, listen, tell us about yourself. Tell us about uh, just about yourself and the project that you're doing now. Um, yeah, love to hear more about this. Thank you. And and so people might be wondering, I sent you over that picture as my photo for the uh, for the accompanying episode here. And if you haven't seen it, it's me in an American flag shirt, an American flag sunglasses, and an American flag hat, cowboy hat with my rifle in just, you know, shirts open, blown in the wind, and I'm giving a thumbs up. And I realized that that picture can be kind of uh, maybe a little much, uh, a little over the top. But I love that picture just because that photo was taken in Afghanistan on my second deployment there in Ghazni province. And it was one of our last days there and we were fooling around. And between about three of us, we had that outfit put together. So we all took turns taking photos with it. And, um, and it just, it, it, to me, it's a reminder that I had no business getting to where I've gotten in life. Like I grew up in a really bad home with a really bad family life. And I was a terrible student, um, enrolled and had nothing going for me, working part-time dead-end jobs, dropped out of community college two days in and was really on a path to nowhere. And thankfully, from the inspiration of a friend of mine who joined the Marine Corps, I got on a path that led me to the Navy, which totally saved my life. And I ended up doing well. And uh, and I owe a lot of that to, to the Navy and to the people that I served with. And that photo is just, you know, it's funny but it reminds me somehow I got here despite the odds being against me. And, uh, and that's possible for anybody. And so I have, I have to tell you when I saw that, I, I was just staring at it and I, this must be Max, but it doesn't look like him. And then it's so funny seeing you now because you're so clean cut and you're, and the way that you articulate yourself just on, you know, the scuttlebutt show and your content and how thoughtful you are. It is really amazing to hear how you share your life when you were growing up. Like, it's so hard to imagine that, you know, that's, that's where you came from because of who you are now. It is amazing. So well done, Max. 
Thank you. It's uh, no fault of my own. Um, <laughs> it's thanks to great people that I've uh, been lucky enough to encounter. And, and I'm very grateful for that. So um, yeah, and, and that photo, it's six months, no shave, no haircut, um, barely a shower being out there in the middle of nowhere. And so that was good times. I was out there with the army. Actually, both deployments I did to Afghanistan were with the army. I spent 10 months with the 16th military police, which I'm a lifetime honorary member of. Um, so that's why I feel free to talk so much trash about the army on my show. And <laughs> I, uh, was with a ODA team or special forces in Ghazni province in 2013 slash 14, um, supporting their operations out there. And it was, it was fantastic. Um, I, I loved it. I had a great time. So I'm very lucky. It was, uh, and a lot of really magical coincidences and happenstances and dominoes falling in the right row um, to get where I got. And so I appreciate that. And I love to be able to pay it forward a little bit. So a lot of the stuff I'm doing now is designed to pay homage to those who helped me along the way. And maybe I can help somebody else. That's a lot of what this new film is about too. Yeah. And well, and it's wonderful too, because I think it really talks to speaks to how willing you were i mean when you were given the opportunity you did take it and this is how your life unfolded so it's it's a wonderful reminder that that's what willingness can do and uh so i appreciate that so yeah so anyway well tell us about this film yeah so my love for film started as young as I can remember, a lot of my childhood was spent watching movies as soon as I could. Uh, they, they were my kind of an escape. And as soon as I was old enough, I would go to the mall and sneak into movie theaters and watch five movies a day, sometimes the same movie a couple of times. Just, it was a place I could hang out. And I've always wanted to get into filmmaking. In 2015, after getting back from Iraq, I started just buying a camera and filming things and taking on projects and working with a lot of veterans and military and people I met at the gym and things like that. And so in Okinawa was my first big project. And that was that documentary. When I got back to oceans, I'm in Oceanside, California. Now my wife is stationed. She's active duty and she's stationed at Camp Pendleton. So we're living here in Oceanside. And I decided to um, sign up at a local jujitsu academy. When I get there, you know, everyone's a Marine. You can imagine it's Oceanside, Camp Pendleton. Everyone's a Marine or their family's Marines or prior Marine, whatever it is. There are no prior Marines. I get that. I always feel awkward saying that. I know somebody's be like, once a Marine, always a Marine, I, I, which I respect. So the, the person who owns it, who's also the, the lead instructor, they call them professors in jujitsu, is a retired Marine, of course. And he starts telling me that he's trying, he and I have breakfast one day, and he starts telling me that he's trying to get um, somebody to come in and train. He's a Marine and a double leg amputee one above the knee and one below the knee he was in an ied blast injury stepped on an id and his kids trained there and i said that is so cool um i i hope that he does i look forward to meeting him so maybe a week after he or a week after i sign up he signs up so this is a uh, middle of august of this year actually it was probably September, like September 1st, September 1st, he signs up and comes in for his first class. Actually, that was the day. And so he comes in, starts training. And it's awesome. We meet. He's a very, very cool guy, very smart guy, well-spoken, everything. Shortly after that, the professor makes an announcement. There's an upcoming competition in October, October 23rd, who's going to compete. And as he starts going around asking people who's going to compete, Julian, who is the guy I'm talking about, says, I'll compete. And the place was like, hell yeah. The motivation levels went up. Because here's a guy who just started training jujitsu. He's living with his injury, thriving with it. And with only seven weeks of training, decided he would compete, not in an adaptive athlete division, not in any, any special you know, league, just a full-on adult weight class competition. And it was awesome. So... That's done. He did that. And we filmed everything, the training, the competition, everything. And the more I got to know him, the bigger the story became because he, he's such an amazing guy. And there's so much more to it um, that I want to share. And so I decided 
to raise some money. So we did an Indiegogo where we raised about $10,000 and then are going into production on kind of a, another feature documentary slash narrative piece about him because his story reflects the story of a lot of people living with visible and invisible injuries from the war on terror. Boy, that's powerful. I'm going to um, actually open up the screen here. Um, I Can you imagine? I mean, the rest of you, can you imagine being that person? Like, I, I can't even believe the courage he must have and the willingness to be able to do that and how wonderful to get his story out there. Um, what, what, what are other aspects? Like, what, why do you think he is so willing? What did he have? I mean, have you discovered like what gives him that courage? What gives him that willingness to just put himself out there like that? Well, some of those things are, you know, are going to be revealed in the film. Some of them are very deeply personal. Um, some of it is what, what else are you going to do? You know, what are you going to do? Are you going to stop? Are you going to wallow in sadness and grief? Are you, or are you going to, you know, get back to living and raising your family and growing a family and achieving things and progressing no matter what, which is the spirit of the veteran community. And some of it is honoring those who were not as fortunate to make it home. Um, Julian's unit was particularly engaged in very violent combat. And he had a lot of, uh, of his, of his friends, um, who were killed and more who were lost to the fight at home, um, suicide, I mean, and it's, it's a lot, it's an incredibly heavy thing, burden to carry, but to thrive in spite of that is really inspirational. There are probably a lot of people who feel like they're going through something similar alone, but they're going through it in parallel with many others. And so sharing one person's story hopefully can remind others that it's possible to carry on. That's beautiful. That's, that's what an example, how, how is he doing now? Like, how does he feel after doing this, after doing the documentary, what is his mental, emotional, spiritual health like night right now? Or how what? has it changed since starting this? Yeah. I don't want to speak too much for, for him about that. Um, I'll, he'll have an opportunity to speak for himself as we continue filming for sure about that. But when I tell you that in my pitch video um, for the campaign, I said, Julian, I'm going to paraphrase myself here. Julian will surprise you and inspire you with his, his attitude, his spirit, his philosophical mind. And he'll do that in ways that are hard to imagine because you have to meet him to really get it. But he lights up the room um, when he walks into jujitsu and it's, it's got nothing to do with his injury. It's just his attitude that he brings to everything. And there, it, it, there is a big difference between a sharp contrast between days that he's there training and days that he's not, you can tell, you can hear him the loudest, most motivated guy out there on the mats saying, who's next, bring it on, you know, sometimes an ura, right. For the Marine Corps. And it's great. And he brings that energy to everything. And so he's, uh, he's got a beautiful family, um, who are very supportive and he's very supportive of them. His, like I said, his kids train, uh, jujitsu. And so it's kind of a family affair. Uh, that's part of the story too. And, you know, there are challenge, certainly challenges to living with, uh, with permanent injuries. And we address those in the, in the production as well which is incred incredibly emotional to, to go through. And, and for us, we, we, he and I have become really good friends in the process. Um, I watched his dogs while he was at Disneyland recently. And if that, to, that to me expresses a level of trust and, uh, and closeness. So um, it's been very emotional to sit and talk with him. A lot of tears shed mm -hmm. because those things are, it's kind of like when you listen to a, and I hope I'm not rambling. 
it's kind of like when you watch a a 95 year old world war ii veteran talk about their time overseas it's like it happened yesterday and for julian it happened you know a few years ago but relatively recently and those are things that people never uh forget and grapple with for a lifetime so a lot of emotion a lot of tears shed um but it's been a a really special experience. One of the challenges for me is to respect the pers- how closely held these events are and telling somebody that, hey, I want to share this with the world and making that appropriate. Yeah. Well, he definitely trusts you. I mean, that's for sure. If he's willing to completely open his life up for you to do the documentary that says a lot about your relationship. And, uh, we were talking a little bit beforehand, um, just about the power of the arts and it's, it's exciting to get this voice out there to just, you know, so many, I think struggle with taking that first step of action, which can open up so many doors and to know that he's willing to do this. And, and then this is the way, this is the road that you've chosen is to give a platform to other voices through the arts is, is amazing. Um, how, what has this done for you? Like, what is, how, what has it done for you as far as like your, your growth, uh, spiritually, mentally, emotionally doing these documentaries and hearing the depth of the stories and the backstories and yeah. What, what has that done for you? Or how has that impacted you? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, because I've been doing the Scuttlebutt show for a while, I've had um, some, and it, this is kind of this might sound relatable to you as well. So, having done the Scuttlebutt show, I've had great opportunities to talk to veterans who've been through some really crazy things. I've talked to a number of Navy SEALs because I come from the Naval Special Warfare background, and I've talked to soldiers who fought at the Battle of Kamdesh, Cop Keating. Uh, they made the movie recently, The Outpost, in the book, The Outpost, about them. And there were two Medals of Honor awarded for actions that day. There, It was the single day deadliest battle in all of the war in Afghanistan. And and I taught, and I get the opportunity to talk to, I, I talked to a soldier named Scotty Hastings who was shot point blank 10 times in Afghanistan. And he went on to become a Paralympic archer, uh, archery coach for Paralympic or veteran archer athletes, um, para- not Paralympic, but, you know, adaptive athletes. And I've spoke and I, and I've met Julian and what an honor it is to be a hub for these stories. And if you're careful and you listen, you can find lessons that cross between these, all these different lives and all these different worlds. And it really changes the way I look at the world. Um, I just, I see a person and I just see different lived experiences, different feelings, different struggles. Um, it's, it's really quite an honor to, and, and different achievements and, and magnificent achievements, um, that people have, have accomplished. And so it's a huge honor. I, I respect it a lot and I'm very grateful. And it certainly uh, has a deep personal meaning to me to see people in spite of any circumstance thriving. And I keep using that word thriving because it's really the, I think it's the right word, not just living, but growing in spite of circumstance. And that's something really special. Yeah. So well said. And I do feel the same. I absolutely feel the same. It is such an honor. Um, I love how you express that. Yeah, it it is to me, it really does open up a whole new world. And it's amazing with all the, you know, you can, you can see the division out there when you get to know somebody and you get to talk, you really see just how connected we are as human beings. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful road to be on. And I feel like it's kind of the antidote to everything that we're seeing these days. And uh, so um, I'll be rooting you on, of course, with everything that you're doing through the arts, telling these stories and being in this 
a very sacred arena. I think that's how I see it. And that you have an in to that too, because you're part of that too. So it, it's really cool to see this. And um, is do, does uh, Janet or Brianne, would you like to make a comment or do you have any questions? Yeah, I just want to make a comment uh, about the one with Okinawa. Um, I met a woman when I was doing some training down in uh, San Francisco, and she wrote a play about the comfort women of Okinawa, because her, I believe it was her grandmother was one. It, and uh, it she sent me a copy. I would love to see something like that, you know, that people don't know or understand that these people even existed, right? Uh, that were part of the war that aren't recognized or honored that they had a role to play in it too. So I'm uh, hopefully that I'll uh, get to see it. I, I won't be down there, but when it's open to the public, make sure you let us all know. Thank you. Yeah. There's a, yeah, one of the things I find most valuable, especially doing that documentary in Okinawa, one of the things I've learned, and unfortunately it seems to be only available to people after they've grown mature enough to accept it is appreciating history. And so researching history, going through the national archives and reading about things that happened in Okinawa, learning about the history, researching for that film um, was, I uncovered some real gems and I spoke to a brilliant uh brilliant man, Ben Milligan, who wrote the book By Water Beneath the Walls, The Rise of the Navy Seals, which is a, a telling of the history of the Navy Seals, but not like anything you've ever read before. And I cannot, it's my favorite book of all time, and I cannot recommend it highly enough. But the things you learn researching history are gifts. I mean, that's lightning in a bottle. And I, I, if I could tell somebody younger than me, I'm 37 and a half, if I could give them one piece of advice, it'd be start reading about history. Um, for me, it's, you know, I love mi military history, currently reading about the Korean War, a book called The Korean War, uh, which is not the most original, but it's a great uh, explanation of the politics and circumstances leading up to and during and after the Korean War. Um, it's, yeah, it's really great to explore what's already been put out there. Um, by smart people who've done their research and put together incredible works of nonfiction. Go out there, read about history, learn history. It will change the way you look at the present and towards the future. Definitely. I, uh, and what was the name of the book? Was it By the Water, Under the Water? By Water, Beneath the Walls. Oh, By Water, Beneath the Walls. Yeah. One of the best, I mean, I, I think it's the best book I've ever read and it's incredibly well researched for just to put it in perspective, the last hundred pages of the book are, are references. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like anything like that. I think this, right. I'm really enjoying the, the books that a couple of our guests have put out and anything to do with history. Cannot, Thank you so much. Cannot recommend highly enough. So I'm curious, what what is it like? I mean, you reading, you know, history and really seeing people from an art, you have to, you have to have empathy, I think, to be in your situation to to dive deeply into people's stories and create these documentaries. And then you're also a warrior. I mean, you're tip of the spear arena warrior. How does that mix? Like when you read the history or how has that changed you to have these different venues and how you see the world and war and uh, that sort of thing? Well, I, I, I don't, I, I don't know if I would call myself a warrior. I, uh, I appreciate that, but um, I am just, I feel like I got close enough to be an observer and, uh, and, you know, I've seen toughness and roughness and, uh, and it's, and I don't know, maybe I, I don't know how other people see me, but, um, it's, that's something really, uh, I, I revere. So 
anyway, I appreciate that. Um, I don't know where I, where I would put myself on on a scale there, but um, it's for me. This is a, my personal belief: is to embrace the ugliness of it. Um, there's a lot of glorification of war and violence, but I encourage people to not shy away from the bad parts of it. Like there's, um, you know, people who are savage war fighters and have been in the trenches and I'm, I'm talking back to, you know, world war one and, and all through time. Um, these great warriors that we admire and build statues to can also struggle with massive issues post-war, post-conflict. And I have really appreciated getting into the darkness of that because um, that's what's real. That's what's real. And it's not pretty. It's not always pretty. In fact, it's pretty ugly. And so there's, a, but there's a lot of value to being honest. And so it's so important to be truthful. And you could go, oh man, you've been in 15 deployments. That's so badass. And it's, you know, gr you know, it's an it's an a, something to really awe at and say that's impressive. You know, 10 deployments, 15 deployments, spe you know, special forces, marine infantry, whatever you are a real war fighter, something to be embraced. And we need to love those people and value them because they're keeping us all safe at night while we sleep. And also it can be horrible and it is horrible. There's no question about it. Uh, any, any violence, if you've ever experienced it firsthand is pretty ugly. Um, it's not like on TV. It's not like in the movies and you got to get in there and dig and find out what's real and how it affects people to better understand it because otherwise you just get a cycle of of the same mistakes over and over again so for me and, and also it's important to understand why would somebody who let's let's use the seal community as an example this this is the kind of thing that haunts me is somebody leaves their the comfort of their home and family to join the navy they go through the hardest military training in the world where they could have quit at any time, but <clears throat> and finished it. Then they go on to more training for years. They earn their trident. They serve honorably in the Navy and deploy overseas to the big show, the thing that they've been training for. And afterwards they take their lives. Yeah. Yes. Somebody who gives so who's sacrificed so much to achieve this dream. And that dream has, has gotten them to a place that's so dark that they take their own lives. Yeah. And, but all, but when people hear Navy SEAL, they go, you know, that's what's up, you know? And, and that's true. That is true. The greatest, Ill, most elite fighting force on the planet. But there's some other part that's missing there that could drive somebody to go through all that, to get everything that they ever wanted that they were willing to die for. And where does it leave them? It leaves them in such a dark place or so medicated or so alone that they kill themselves. And so I like to get into the truth of the darkness. Uh, if that is, if that makes sense and understand what people are going through. So that way I can walk around day to day feeling like I get it more. Yeah. I, I have to just pop in Max. I, that makes so much sense to me. What you just shared is why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Um, I did experience uh, a suicide in my family. I never wanted anybody to be suffering in silence again. And I went back to school and there was a retired green beret that I happened to sit next to. And his story honestly is why I'm doing what I'm doing now. Why would somebody given, you know, who was given, you know, bronze medals and all these tours come back and try to take his life three times? That is a civilian totally not connected. That spoke to me so loudly that I had to find out more. 
And that caused this journey of, I want it. Can we have coffee? I would really like to hear your story. And then I'd have his wife, he and his wife over for dinner. And then I'd invite the community over to our house to hear his story. Like, guys, how come we don't know this about our protectors? How come we are not there to be there in that gap? You know, the, there's not just a physical suffering or a death that could happen as a sacrifice. Look, look at what's happening. You know, they're human. How much can a human being, no matter how amazing, how much can a human being take without understanding and support? And I'm so glad that you brought this up because I'll tell you, that is what has kept me going with this platform is that I want this side of our protectors to be known so that um, civilians, so we know how to support better or we can support, we can be a louder voice also in maybe getting policy change to get more, you know, whatever that looks like, or, you know, people like you who are doing it through the arts, you know, that's a powerful way to share stories with many people who are so far from military or like I shared, I'm from a artistic, you know, musician family. We knew nothing about military or first responders. So it is funny that I'm now in this arena, but I feel so passionate about this. Like, how could we not be caring about our protectors to get into that, that, uh, the hidden wounds, you know, besides for the physical, which I'm sure it all, you know, is together, but thank you. Thanks for sharing that Max. Yeah, it's not, and it's not to say that veterans and those who served overseas are, are victims or, or anything like that, because that's not. And just so I'll just add that, not that you, I, you didn't say anything that made me think that I just want to make, I just want to make sure that I'm clear. Yeah. There's no, it's not a victimhood mentality. It's just that I, I want, I, I think when you get behind the curtain, there's a different side uh, than what's presented on, you know, to the forefront of things. And when you talk about sending people to war in, in war, there's no room for complaining and, and weakness and self-loathing and you just got to go do it. And, and it's ne and it is necessary, but people should understand the gravity of what they're asking people to do when they send them to to combat, and wow. it's, you know, it it really it never leaves you. It, it's something you'll never forget, um, and it might not even hit you for twenty years, and then you go, what did we do? What happened? And and when you look at look at any you know, historic bad battlefield, the, on the day of the battle, it's, you know, you're fighting for your life. You're not thinking about it. Then go, you know, a year later back to the same grounds where the grass is regrown and it's just a field and you really can't help but go, why did we do that? What was the point of that? This is just grass and dirt. Like what was the point? Mm. Wouldn't it have been better if we didn't <laughs> all kill each other? Um, and in some place, and some people are just evil and, and it's necessary to go, you know, protect those who can't protect themselves. But it's, it's, uh, there's a darkness to it no matter what. So it's, it's worth noting. It's worth getting into and, and understanding. And I imagine with your love for history too, you're, you probably have so many ideas and opinions of maybe different ways to avoid the carnage of battles that we've had, we've been in possibly. Um, or maybe not, you know, maybe when not. You, you get into history, it's pretty cyclic and, uh, and people have short memories. I think Smedley Butler um, in his book, War is a Racket is probably one of the greatest examples of all time, because if you read, if you read it today, you would thought it was written today. It's, except for talking about, you know, <laughs> uh, horse saddles, which probably there's some truth to still not being used and spurs not being used. Um, everything that, and if I don't know if anybody on the panel today is, is, is familiar with that work, that paper, but it's really a, a pa more of a paper than a book. Um, it's, 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 it's every word of it is exact, has not gotten better at all. Um, it's all the same. And so maybe not, maybe we're doomed to repeat all the mistakes again and again, but the best we can do is educate and, um, 
and pick our, I tell people, I say this a lot, you know, careful when you choose your champions, make sure that you, everyone out there should understand their own core values and look for people to represent them. I don't mean just in politics. I mean, but you could apply it to that. I mean, in, in every aspect of life, find pe- understand your own values and find people who represent them to get behind and associate yourself with and lead and be led by. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Definitely. Um, does anybody have any comments? Thank you, Max. Thanks for that. You know, I, I, I actually, I would say, well, I'm looking at people unmuting, um, or not unmu- uh, muting, unmuting right now. Um, it's the, the more that I have been with the military, you know, the veterans, I, I, I can't tell you how much my respect, it doesn't diminish, it grows the more deeply I know them. So I, the word victim or pity, like it, it just never enters my mind. So anything I share about supporting, it is with the utmost respect. I have learned so much. Um, it it has, I, I mean, honestly, I have learned so much the last two and a half years just doing these uh, online talks. Um, my respect, um, it, it I, I feel passionate to even more getting the voices out because I feel like we're missing this in regular life, regular civilian life, we're missing this wisdom. And uh, so I do feel very honored to have these voices, uh, to have um, like your perspective and your opinions and what you've learned and um, even learning from your lives, you know, um, uh, or the wisdom that you've gleaned from even maybe reading history. It is, it's such a rich bag of wisdom that I love helping to push out there. Um, I I feel more and more that it's always great to see people who are veterans get into places of leadership because of the richness of what has been tried and true and learned. And um, so it's, I, I just, I really appreciate it. I wanted to just say that it's never out of any kind of pity or victim when somebody's struggling um, but it's just out of incredible respect and a desire to support, you know, so Paul, yeah. that's why oh, I think like, these conversations are great. Yeah, me too. Uh, absolutely. Paul. I just posted a verse, uh, the chat and in response this question about the grass is all green and why did we do this? Um, and it comes from um, Second Chronicles. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And I think that solution has been with us for a couple thousand years and not very many people have paid much attention to it. Um, you're, you're absolutely right, Max, when you ask the question, why did we do this? Um, and I, I've come to the conclusion, at least in our country, um, follow the money. And unfortunately, that's really how it is. Um, it's you know, get into wars because um, they they believe in a cause. People start wars because they believe in themselves, and there's a huge difference. And those people who believe in the cause, are willing to surrender their lives for that. But as General Patton said, your job is not to surrender your life, it's to make the other guys surrender his life. And even when people do that, the trauma from that just does not instantly, you don't just say, well, I'm busy right 
you know, that, but when you get out of the service and you get back home, then that process begins where you try to figure out what's causing your grief, your PTSD or whatever else it is you're dealing with. Um, and, and frankly, I think what I there is a very simple solution. Getting to it is a different story. I'm not trying to make it easy or, or you know, um, just go do it and everything will be better. Because unfortunately, it's not the case. But in any event, for whatever it's worth. Thank you. Thanks. Paul. You know, it's it's uh, I, I I say the biggest problem in the world is that leaders lie mm -hmm. and um and that that goes back to my comment about choosing your champions but there's so much dishonesty um regarding the military uh for one the kind of geopolitical global concerns and the scapegoating um and the propaganda and all that and you could go on but it's a, one of the biggest problems regarding that is that, you know, just leader leaders lie. And sometimes they, the lies are right to your face and, and everyone knows it's a lie and we just go along with it anyway. Um, part of the reason I tell the stories that I do is, uh, the ugly part of the truth. Um, so that's one part of what I embrace, like I was saying, and, one of the sad things about that doing putting out content on the internet is it's not what people are looking for. I think one of the darkest things that I've done in my time since getting out of the Navy is start a program on the internet and see that people flock to negativity. They're searching for it and positivity is on the back burner. Um, that's scary. And that I think when that, trend changes you know you could see it it's like you know you know when somebody takes data and puts on a graph so it's easy to see you're like look at this spike right here you know like oh yeah, i see that it'd be we need to see the spike of people pursuing negativity flip to people pursuing positivity and people need to choose champions based off of what they love not what they hate which is how it is now so that is i'd like to see people tell us what they want to build not what they want to tear down and I like to see people tell us who they who they want to love, not who they want to hate, and celebrate goodness instead of remarking against evil. So those are some things that I would love to see. Me too. Yeah. I think yeah. that the, the the answer to that is in the part, part of humbling ourselves, being humble. The Stuart Scheller is a perfect example of that. Um, he is a Marine who gave up his entire career to stand up for the truth. And truth is something we've lost track of. Um, truth is something that has been distorted and um, has been turned into a narrative. Um, and and so I, I share your concerns and I share your beliefs about what's going on here. And um, there are just too many examples of good men who have died because they believe and didn't have the leadership who was being willing to be honest enough to tell the truth, whatever that is. And that, I think, just kind of ego. Yeah. So I am now on that note, working on a project that's going to talk about some, you know, truths. And there are a generation of veterans, men and women, living with visible and invisible injuries from the wars that started on September 11, 2001, um, before then, really. And you bring up Stuart Scheller, the one, the wars that unceremoniously ended in August of 2021. Um, 
But as time goes on and people will forget what it was like to live through that and people will be in 20 years, people are going to be the work, the workforce of 20 years from now will be born after the war on terror ended and it'll be old news. But for the next 50 and 60 and 70 years, people are going to be living with those visible and invisible injuries. And so it's not something that needs to be shoved down people's throats all day, every day, but there's a debt owed and little reminders now and then are payments on that debt. And so I'm hoping that my new film, Julian, which I'm wearing the shirt right now, um, will be one of those little reminders of what people are, are living with and living through and in spite of and thriving in spite of, like I said earlier. And, uh, and we're still looking for contributions. Uh, we're still always looking for people who want to get involved. The Indiegogo, which Sarah has the link to, is over, but I'm still honoring all of the perks and everything that go along with that. Um, Jiu-jitsu has been an incredible path for many veterans, and there are, uh, a lot. I'd love to, to, in a moment here, talk about some of the great organizations that are supporting veterans through jiu-jitsu. And when this film is done, uh, celebrate these little victories that will hopefully inspire a lot of people. You know, Ron, really quick, one of my favorite quotes ever from Ronald Reagan was, and it's almost like a legend at this point, is he was asked, um, what's the largest crowd he's ever spoken to? And to which he replied, one. And the person who asked him said, that's not right. I've seen you speak to tens of thousands of people. And he said, if you try to speak to tens of thousands of people, you will reach no one. But if you try to speak to one person, you can reach tens of thousands. And so I'm hoping by telling an authentic story with Julian, with him, not about him, but alongside him telling that story, uh, it can reach many. So if anybody wants to know more, you can reach me at the scuttlebutt show gmail.com, anywhere on social media, the scuttlebutt show. Sarah has my contact info. Um, we're yeah. looking to, you know, keep pushing forward. We'll put that all on the YouTube description. We'll have all that information in the link. And can you also tell us about the foundations that we talked about earlier? Um, like uh, We Defy, Ronan, Adopt a Cop foundations. Yeah, so this will be, you You can share this with your audience now, Sarah, going forward, if you ever feel it's appropriate, because I know that this is your, your workspace, veteran, active duty, first responder. Um, you have a lot of people represented in that community. So there is the We Defy <laughs> Foundation, who's going to be featured in um, my film, which sponsors up to a year of jujitsu training paid for at participating academies for veterans. So you just have to go on there and apply. They'll sponsor up to a year of your training, so they'll pay for it. There, okay. there is the Ronin Foundation, which does something similar, but for active duty. And then there's adopt a cop, which again, does something basically the same thing, but for police officers. So there are, uh, and these are specifically regarding jujitsu. So if people are interested, which is an incredibly spiritual martial arts journey to go on, to go train jujitsu, it's very special. And it's a very supportive community of all types of athletes, but once you walk into those doors, it is, you know, whoever you are outside, whatever circumstances you're living with, hardly matters. You get on the mats, you roll or grapple with your classmates, your teammates, and you sweat and you get it out and you grow as a person. So it's really great. I keep hearing about this from the SEAL community is jujitsu. It just seems like this is taking off. So you said we defy, and that is active, or that is veterans. Is veteran, yep. And then the the Ronin Foundation is for active duty. Yep. And then the Adopt a Cop. Uh, same think. thing. Okay, that is fantastic. And I we've had this conversation. Even jujitsu would be probably such great training for police officers. Uh, just even more training to help them with confidence in, you know, their daily work. Um, fantastic. That's really good, good information. Thank um, you. Please share. 
Yes, I sure will. I will put that in the link. I will put that in uh, the description. So Max, is there anything that you would like to leave us with? What would you like us to walk away with from this great conversation? Well, one is if anybody out there wants to get involved in what I'm doing, find me at the scuttlebutt show gmail.com. Sarah's got my info. We're looking to continue to raise money, anything that's possible. So if anybody out there wants to be a part of that, I'm easy to find. Um, and I will talk to you about that to, you know, when you look at veterans, um, and all these veterans organizations out there and veterans sharing their stories, sharing your, you know, Julian puts it well, sharing your pearls, your, your things, these things that you hold closely, especially when they, sh when they're shared with like you, for example, Sarah, you get people to come out there and share their pearls. Um, it is not weak to express sadness and grief. It is strong to do so and keep moving forward. You can do both. You can say that you're sad and scared and hurting and keep moving forward. It's not one or the other. And we can all support each other and be in this together instead of telling each other that these things should be suppressed and kept to yourselves, um, or, not expressed because they're weakness or there's no room for that complaining. You can express it and not be complaining. You can do it in a positive way. So we need to encourage each other to do such things and support each other along the way. Um, and I think we'll all be a little bit better off. I appreciate that because I hear on my end, how many lives are saved because somebody was willing to do that too. So it's, it's a wonderful win, 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 um, when people find that courage to take that step and to do that. So uh, Max, I just want to thank you so much for being on. It's always a pleasure. You're always fascinating and interesting. It's always neat to hear what your project is, you know, what you're up to. And um, I definitely want to support you. Thank you. Thank you.